For this special two-part episode of Back to the City, I am very excited to be joined by all four members of Graveyard Club. So that's Amanda, and Matthew, and Corey, and Michael. Welcome to Back to the City. We're going to celebrate Halloween in the only right way to celebrate Halloween in my book. We were building up to this moment with all the grave digging and the journeying into the <laughs> night. <laughs> now you're going to unleash your Ouija board a song <laughs> on us. We can hear it right now. This is the new single from Graveyard Club. Why is it called Ouija? I think that's a song title we've, we've played around with quite a bit. Um, and this song kind of references supernatural things. We're like. And initially I was like, yeah, Ouija, this will, this will work great. And then it was a lyric in the song, mm -hmm. and we had been working on it for a couple months. And at one practice, Mike stopped and he's like, wait, I keep thinking that you're saying, ask Luigi. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't a criticism, it was just yeah, an observation. It's just terrifying. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like immediately like, oh, I can't, I can't. Ouija sort of ruined it, yeah. Ask the Ouija and that didn't sleep for days after. Yeah. So, so, awesome. there, <laughs> so there was a lyric about Ouija, yes. but it had to go because it would have people thinking about Mario. Yes. Exactly. Yeah? Yep. yep. So where, right. where in the song, did, was that in the chorus? There was, yep. Yeah. Now it's so set what's... your ghost free yeah. is the new lyric it used yeah. to say, ask okay. the Ouija. Which is better because it no. rhymes way better now. Yeah. yeah. It's and it's better. still, yeah. still Halloween-y, thank goodness. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, we worked around it, and I think it's better for it. You've been in the studio working on just this song, but you've been working on other songs as well. Is this new single indicative of the, the current direction of Graveyard Club? It's kind of a we'll see thing. I mean, yeah. we're, we always got a lot of irons in the fire. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I would almost like venture to say no. No. Yeah. But like, not to speak for everybody, but I just think that like this song kind of stood out a little bit as sounding, I don't know, single worthy or a little bit more like some of the stuff off the last record. Mm -hmm. And I think some of the other stuff that we're working on is not. Some not, of the other stuff just goes much, together but, with each other better. And yeah. this didn't go together with that as much, but we still liked everything. So we thought this might make more sense to do as a single. Yeah, so this is a good kind of point between Salador and yeah. whatever is to be. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So the second interview, if people want to check that out, that's more of a retrospective, going back to the origins of Graveyard Club and thinking about how we got to this moment. And something that we highlight in it is the interesting addition of the two most recent members, Amanda and Corey. It was after having created Salador that some of the interesting live features, such as the 12-step MIDI controller that Amanda controls with a beat, and the SPDSX drum pad that Corey uses. Those came to be after Celador existed, yeah? So this is one song that's highlighting those features. How did this song come to be? Did it develop from like a jam thing? Or much. This is more of a like Matt wrote out the skeleton, like had yeah. like at least the first yeah. few parts pretty sketched out. I guess the twelve step part I did kind of improvise. It's just like something similar to what we use on another song that we really liked, and I was like, that would go here. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Some of those uh, electronic pieces don't necessarily inform the songwriting as much as they do like help us know how to best reconstruct Matt's blueprint, mm. like the live setting, I think, and then from there it sort of evolves. Don't you think that's fair to say? Yeah, I think in this song that's fair to say. This was probably one of the first songs that stuck for us after Salvador. There was probably demos we listened to that we maybe played around with and didn't really <laughs> pan out. And this is one of the early, I think maybe last last fall is when we started kind of listening to it and playing around with it. So yeah, I think it was, there's a lot of electronic elements. Amanda introduced the 12 step into the end, which is a cool recipe we've used for mm -hmm. a couple of different tracks as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it just helped keep all those pieces together that were in the blueprint. Mm -hmm. So back to the blueprint then, starting with the blueprint, do the lyrics ever change once you take it to the band and it starts developing as a song with the band? Oh yeah. You did that, oh, yeah. Did that happen with this song? Yeah, did, yeah, I feel like most songs I, you know, maybe 
out of every 10, like two or three will have finished lyrics from yeah. Yes, I knew it from the start, these fit, it felt right. But I think a lot of them are placeholders where I'd be amazed if did you finish writing yes. the lyrics like the day before we went into the studio to record? Not this one, but I had yeah, <laughs> the last one. So that, that's the case. Or minute. the day before we have to play it live, and then I'm like sometimes like reading the lyrics right. a little bit right before I'm gonna sing them. Yeah. So this was one that had gibberish lyrics. I don't even know if they were. I think sometimes I just like the sound of, of certain kind of like you know n not nonsense words really. I'll just sing them and then kind of fit in words and I'm like, yeah, this kind of matches what the melody I heard was, so. But now this is a song which is, it's fair to say, haunted by a Ouija board. Yeah. It's not there, but it is there. Yeah, yeah. the memory and, of it. Yeah, <laughs> and what was the initial significance of the Ouija board? I think part of it, I feel like there's a vocabulary that we've used on other song titles. Mm. And Ouija had been you know, in the toolbox for a while. Mm -hmm. Just like a, a word I wanted to use. And I think the other half of it is, it kind of references someone that's maybe bored with every day, bored with certain things, like looking for something more. Trying to connect uh, with something beyond the ordinary. Right, like looking yeah. for something supernatural to give their life a little more meaning or significance, potentially. Yeah. So that, that's where Ouija fit in initially to the song. It begins, I'm tired of the twilight, but I'm also sick of all the sunshine. Uh, so that's interesting. We explore these different realms, you know, in part two we talk a lot about the recurring landscape of, of the night. That's, the night is, sets the scene for, for Graveyard Club as a whole. What's the significance of you know, the shifting scene here and the sickness and the being tired of the multiple scenes? I think it's a kind of a two-parter. I think part of it is the alliteration I like. Yes. Yeah. The tired of the twilight, sick of the sunshine. Um, and the other part is just to explain that boredom or like the searching for something. You yeah. Know, it's someone that's explored the night and is done with it, done with the day, and like lived through every season. It's like everything seems the same. Nothing's a, nothing seems impactful. Yeah. There's a sense that everything's been experienced, but there's also maybe an inkling that it hasn't, and a desire to follow that right. and find yeah. something, but maybe a cynicism as to whether <laughs> that, that exists. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in this case, did, did you begin with those ideas and then develop the music? No, definitely not. I feel like those ideas were later. Hmm. Um, I had like a real rough skeleton with, with the synth ideas in there where I'm like, I like these arpeggiators, I like that. I brought it um, as a group, we kind of looked at it and they were like, oh, we might need more parts here. I think we lengthened some parts, shortened something. Kind of arranged the, the parts and, and got our tones down. And then I think maybe the last step was kind of going back and like figuring out the words and how they fit in with those uh, gibberish melodies from the from the initial skeleton of the song. So yeah, it was yeah. later in the process that those things got finalized. Yeah, I like the idea of searching for that feeling, the one you didn't feel anymore. So there's a sense that there was felt to be something of value. Previously, the sensation that one had seemed to be valuable, and now there's a search for something which you already had, but it's not performing the same role for you anymore. song would probably sound most familiar with the record seller to our last one for yep. sure but the other songs it's not like a wild departure or anything I think it's that a reggae album, yeah, it's, it's a reggae <laughs> album. Um, I think that some of our songwriting just evolved a little differently where maybe we just started playing like some guitar riff and then we built around that and at the end of the day it probably still sounds a lot like other graveyard That's club songs like graveyard club for sure yeah I think we've got a very specific aesthetic that we're going for and there's like certain mm -hmm. songs like we're not going to write a song that sounds this way or we're not going to like veer down this path or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that's maybe just more noticeable to us too than it is to other people like we're a little more like hyper tuned into what you're creating when you're the one doing it because you hear it so often and yeah. like in different forms so I think that kind of just like impacts our opinions of maybe how it sounds compared to other stuff. Yeah. More so than, you know, an outside listener would hear it and be like, oh yeah, it sounds, you know, it sounds like you guys. I mean, it's human nature to try to find 
answers to things. Yeah. You try to figure things out. And a lot of times, and I think it's kind of referenced in the song, you'll you'll do something to be like, this is what I want to do, you know, to, or the, this is the person I want to be. And then mm -hmm. you'll look back and be like, I don't know what I was thinking. Like, I've always mm -hmm. been this person. You look back, or when you're, it's like a constant back and forth between looking back at who you were and looking forward at who you hope to be. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times, like, you can't, it's something you can't control. Like, you just have to ride the current of life and just accept it, you know, and see where you end up. Um, so I think with that sentiment, it's more about, you know, like, it's someone that's, they ignore their friends, but they're tired of, you know, everything, and they're wondering why they're lonely, but they ignore people. And instead of being in the present moment and accepting things, you're just always reaching, you're grabbing for something bigger. and and you're never satisfied. Everything's changing. Everything changing. I think a lot of my lyrics are, are about working through things, hmm. you know, and not coming to an answer. Um, and some of it's just like, I like the way the words sound, and it's just, I, I like the syllables and things together. So I think it's a hybrid between trying to be poetic and maybe like, oh, I like I like the vibes of this, I like the yeah. feeling. And trying to actually say something, but feeling like maybe maybe I have nothing to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Working into the dark, making the night one zone, through to the light until you get sick of the sunshine, and then <laughs> right, <laughs> right, <laughs> and, well, yeah. and then I just thinking, well, <laughs> these are my conflicted thoughts and feelings about all of that. What are some of the themes on the other new songs? I don't know if this is even if we've discussed this, but probably the closest to a love song I've written. Ah. My, I feel like Death Proof is kind of a love song. Death Proof? Kind of, That's an interesting name for a love song. Um, it's about a love song with, with a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I feel like I don't like to write too about my own life too much. I think it seeps in on its own. Um, but yeah, there's. I think it's the same stuff. Night, darkness, day, love, death. <laughs> yeah, but, but now Death Proof. That's an interesting yeah. shift. Yeah, so the idea, and that's been an idea I've had for a while, but it's like about, you know, everything, everything dying, everything decaying, but there are some things in the world that are resistant to that. Yeah. You know. I mean, I think as a band, we've, we've kind of embodied that, that attitude as well. Like, I think we've persisted through quite a bit. We're all... Hmm you know, really dedicated and um, this is kind of our life, you know, like what, what we love to do. So um, I think lyrically, Death Proof definitely hints at that, some of that persistence. I think some of it is just trying to find something sacred mm. as well, you know, something that, that doesn't adhere to the same laws as everything else. Yeah, whether it's through the Ouija board or by yeah. asking Luigi. <laughs> yeah, I asked him, he didn't have any response. He's eating uh, spaghetti. What, um, are they, what are Mario Bros. like? Do they, is there food they always eat? No, they eat mushrooms. <laughs> 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 mushrooms. <laughs> what else will be present on Saturday at the Halloween show? Costumes. Costumes, we need to figure yep. out a group. Are we going to match? We're going to... We're going to get something. We're going to coordinate. I don't know if that means matching or combo or something. There's four Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> Ninja Turtle. Power Ranger. Beatrice. <laughs> Some set of four uh, will, will be present, or maybe you'll be four completely different things, uh, complementing each other. Them Atlas will also be there, yes. complementing yeah. you. So doors are at 10.30, Them Atlas is at 11. Graveyard Club are at 12, the strike of 12. If only we had Vincent Price here to <laughs> <laughs> narrate that bit. Is there anything else to highlight about the Halloween show? We're just super excited to see you there in your best costumes, of course. This is our first time at Ice House. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's yeah. going to be cool. Yeah. We're looking forward to that. And it's Halloween, like Graveyard Club and Halloween. Like, yes. What else are you going to do? Like, what's better than that? That's a good fit. Come on. Have, yeah, have you played a Halloween show before? Yeah, every year we've done yeah. something, but a lot of times it's been more private, kind yeah. of party kind of things with friends or acquaintances, which is fun. But we've always tried to do it up on Halloween. It feels like, how could you not? You know, it's sort of like a sacred night for our band. Yeah. Yeah. We brought a lot of cobwebs. 
And whereas in the song, we are trying and probably failing to connect with something on the other side. What better timing? Uh, it to, yeah, yeah well, this is the moment. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when the clock strikes 12 in the Graveyard Club begin, then uh, the ghosts will be in attendance too. With all the answers. And then philosophy will change. <laughs> There'll be songs all about the answers. <laughs> we learnt them at Ice House on October 28th. So better, better be there if you want to have the answers. Well, thank you very much. Uh, check out part two, uh, viewers, uh, which is a retrospective of Graveyard Club up till now. And uh, yeah, please come back to talk about the new record once it's tracked. We'd love to do it. Thanks for having me. You. You're very welcome indeed.